let's talk a little bit about saving enough for retirement. So many financial planners will talk about the 4% rule. And this is, that's this idea that however much you save for retirement, that you can prudently spend about 4% of that per year. So for example, if upon the day that you retire, you have $1 million saved up, which feels like a lot, but the 4% rule would say, well, you should only spend about 4% of this per year. So that would be about $40,000 per year, which all of a sudden feels, not 40,000K, $40,000, which all of a sudden feels a lot less than a million. And the reason why they focus on 4% is at retirement, you're not going to have this money invested in high risk, high return things because you don't want it to jump up and down by 10 or 20%. So you're going to have it mainly in fairly safe things that are going to be giving you fairly low yield or low interest on it. Maybe if it's in very safe things, you might be getting one, two, 3% on it. It obviously depends on interest rates at the time of your retirement, which could be hard to predict. But this allows the money to grow a little bit. And you are still probably, if the money is growing less than 4%, you're still digging into it, but you're having many years to dig into it. If this money wasn't growing and you're spending 4% a year, you would have 25 years. If this money's growing by even one or 2%, then that's going to extend even further. And obviously if this money is growing by four or 5%, then you could keep doing this for a very long time. But this is a pretty prudent thing to do. And you might want to go the other way around. You might say, all right, upon retirement, I need, I need 60,000 a year to live off of. And be careful when you make these assumptions, because you might say, well, I could imagine doing that in my town now. But if you're not retiring for 10, 20, 30 years, you have to think about inflation and how much things might cost then. And to just get a sense, think about what inflation's done in the last 10, 20, 30 years. But if you have this sense, okay, I'm going to need $60,000 a year, even when you factor in inflation, what you want to do is then just take your $60,000, 60,000, and divide by 4%. Or another way to think about it, divide by 0 0.04. You could do this on a calculator, but you would get this to 1.5% million dollars if you want to have 60,000 here or if you do this with 80,000 you would get that you have to save 2 million dollars and once again be sure to factor in inflation now the next thing you might wonder is okay let's say i do decide that i need to have 1.5 million dollars saved up at the time of my retirement how do i know how much to put aside let's say every month right now in order to get there there is some fancy math to figure that out, but luckily there are these retirement calculators all over the internet. You could find one of them right over here at investor.gov, which is run by the Securities and Exchange Commission. So it's a credible organization. And so you can just fill out this form. So initial investment. So let's say you, you have nothing already, but monthly you wanna contribute $200 and let's say that this is, let's say you're earlier in your career, you're gonna be doing this for 30 years. Estimated interest rate. So this is how the, the percent that it's gonna grow at, and it's hard to completely predict, but let's say over the stock market, you get a little bit higher return. Let's say we go with 8%. Some people would say that's conservative, but if you're investing in more conservative things, some people would say that's aggressive. And then here they say interest rate variance. So they wanna see, well, how, how does the amount you save change depending if you got 9% or 7%? Uh, we don't have to worry about that right now. Let's assume that the money, this is, this is annual interest rate, but let's say it compounds monthly at that annual rate. And now we can calculate. And it says right over here that year 30, our total contributions are going to be about $72,000, but because of that growth, the future value at 8% is 298,000. But as we can see, we did not save anywhere near enough that I just talked about in order to actually get to those numbers that we wanted. So let's juice this up a little bit. Let's say we are saving $500 a month, and let's say that we're doing a little bit better. And I would say I'm getting a little bit aggressive now at 10%. Let me give, let's look at a range here. Let's, let's go plus or minus uh, 5% to see what happens. And now let's calculate this. And so now I'm getting closer, but I'm still not where I need to be 
for those calculations to have 60, if I use the 4% rule, to have $60,000 a year. But now that I can see in 30 years, I'll have 1.13 million. And they can see my future value is right over here. Now, if I were to get 5% return above that, so this is at a 10%, then I'm doing really well. So as you can see, your return really matters. If I get 15% a year, that's all of a sudden almost three and a half million. But if I got 5% a year, that's only, not only, it's a lot of money, but that's 400,000 or a little over 400,000. So that return you get really matters. But once again, you don't want to take on too much risk either. So start playing around with these types of tools and you'll get a sense of, depending on how long you have to save and how much you can contribute, what type of a lifestyle you can have when you retire. And of course, you might be able to go a little bit above the 4% rule if you think that you could dig into it or you can invest it better, but that's always a little bit risky to be overly optimistic with your finances.